Hello everyone, this is Dr. Geeta Shamnani. I, uh, today I will show you a compound microscope which is very important instrument of hematology lab in the first year and in the pathology exams also. So we must know each and every part of compound microscope and how there is functioning of the compound microscope. So let us go uh, to the different parts of compound microscope first. So what are the different parts? So, for ease of learning, we can categorize different parts of microscope. Like first part is support system, okay. Second is focusing system. Third is optical or magnification system. And fourth is the illumination system. So, what is there in the support system? So, come to this microscope here. You can see this one. First part of the support system is base. Here, you can see the base is U shaped or horseshoe shaped okay then next part is uh, in the older microscope we used to have a part uh, like pillars but in this part the, uh, in this uh, newer uh, composition there is no there are no pillars but in older microscope we used to have pillars which were connected with the handle which used to be like c shaped um, uh, by the hinge joint but in this newer uh, variety of the microscope we do not have separate pillars and handle we have a single handle which is more or less L shaped which is made up of heavy metal which is attached over the base perpendicularly and supports many parts of the microscope. Then there is optical tube this is optical tube you can see it extends from the eye lenses this is eye lens and extends from the eye lenses to the upper part of the objective lens this is objective lens this is upper part of the objective lens so from here to this part there is uh, a body tube so the approximately length approximate length of the body tube is 16 to 17 centimeters then uh, the next part of support system is stage so in older microscopes we used to have two parts one was one was the fixed stage the quadrangular plate and we used to have quadrangular plate in center of which there used to have be a aperture which is also there in this microscope and the another another part of the stage was mechanical stage here you can see one was fixed stage and second was mechanical stage so, in mechanical stage, the fixed stage never used to move in previous mi microscopes, but now, uh, now in this microscope, uh, we can see that even the lower stage is moving. So, here we can see this screw is there with the help of which the lower stage, which is a quadrangular plate, which is moving anterior posteriorly. And second, this one, this is mechanical stage which moves with the help of the lower screw right and left. In older microscopes, this stage never used to move and this stage used to move anterior posteriorly as well as right and left. But now here in this modified, uh, modified version, we can see that this even this portion is moving where anterior posteriorly and this one is moving right and left. Along with that, you can see there is a mechanical clip okay so this is a spring mounted clip okay which is helpful in fixing the slide over the microscope okay so now this is all about the support system okay now the second system is focusing system the focusing system is used to focus the specimen so what is there in the focusing system so we can see there is coarse and fine adjustment screw heads so where are these screw heads you can see in the microscope this is the these are the coarse screw heads which are on both the sides you can see this is both the sides coarse screw heads smaller one are fine screw heads so these what these screw heads are doing they are basically moving the stage in earlier microscopes this used to move the optical tube the function is same the function is to to uh, increase or decrease the distance between the specimen and objective lenses okay so here we can see this is coarse screw and this is fine screws so one rotation of the fine screw moves 
the uh, this is stage about 0.1 millimeter okay so one rotation moves the stage 0.1 millimeters previously m uh, movement of the screws used to move the optical tube okay now next next uh, system is the optical system or magnification system in which we used to have body tube what is body tube i have already told you this is body tube extends from the eye pieces to the objective lenses okay uh, length of body tube is approximately 16 to 17 cm so from here till the upper end of the objective lenses then there is eye piece so this upper portion is known as eye piece which contains the lens which is known as eye lens the power of the eye lens in this microscope is 10x but it may vary from 5 5x some microscopes contain 5x 10x some contain 6x or uh, 8x okay then there is nose piece so here circular disc you can see this is known as nose piece the upper portion of the nose piece or the nose piece are uh, of two types one upper one is fixed nose piece and lower one you can see it is revolving nose piece so revolving nose piece contains or lodges objective lenses in it so you can see there are four objective lenses so this is smaller one is not used here uh, is not uh, used in your course but these three this yellow blue and white yellow is 10x means the power of the lens in the yellow one is 10x uh, this one is 40x blue one is 40x and white one is 100x so you can see there are four objectives uh, although la uh, this uh, red one is 4x okay but in your course uh, yellow blue and white are used so here we can see whenever we are moving the nose piece the objective lenses are coming in place and there is a sound click you can listen so there is a sound click when the objective lens is coming in place okay so here this is the optical system next is uh, next are the objective lenses i have already told you 10x 40x and 100x so here you can see 10x 40x and 10x 40x and 100x so 100x is also known as oil immersion lens 10x is known as low power lens 40x is known as high power lens and this white one 100x is known as oil immersion lens how they are used i will tell you later on okay the next system is the illumination system because we need light in that this so from where the light is coming here in this microscope in in my graduation time what microscopes we used to use uh, we used to have natural light source and we used to we used to have mirror and then we had to focus that okay but in uh, in these newer microscope this light source is inbuilt so what could be the light source uh, light source is the source from where the light we are going to use so it may be external or it may be internal external may be natural light source or it may be you know artificial rod lights or bulb lights we we can use which are fitted in our household so whenever we are going to use the external light source we need to have mirror okay now what what uh, what is there in the mirror so we used to have a mirror which was concave on one side and plane on other side so if you are going to use a natural light we you have to use the plane mirror if you are going to external uh, artificial light external source of artificial light you have to use the convex concave concave mirror okay but here in this microscope you have inbuilt light source so you don't have to use any kind of mirror or any kind of mirror is not attached here okay so this was about the mirror now condenser condenser what is condenser you see in the microscope this is below the stage there is a structure below the stage you can see there is a structure which is moving is condenser okay sub stage condenser is also known as sub stage which moves up and down so uh, in different uh, suppose we are using objective 
of 10x the mirror uh, this condenser has to be in the lower most position if we are using 40x it will be in the middle position okay if we are using the 100x then it should be in the upper most position okay i'll repeat the thing if we are using 10x objective the sub stage has to be in the lower most position if we are using 40x then it has to be in the middle position if we are using 100x then it has to be in the highest position so why it is done it is done to match the numerical aperture so the position of the condenser has to be changed according to the objective just to match the numerical aperture now what is numerical aperture i will tell you later on uh, in this video then there is iris diaphragm so what is iris diaphragm it is similar to the uh, diaphragm which is there in the eye so it is like eye there is a diaphragm which which controls the amount of the light which enters into the light so, so here also we have diaphragm which controls the light so so whenever uh, we are going to use the 10x lens so iris diaphragm is minimally open whenever we are using 40x it is little more open and whenever we are using 100x it is widely open and this is again to match the numerical aperture okay so iris here iris diaphragm is also placed inside the condenser okay so this is the knob by which this is the knob there is a knob you can see so by which you can control the iris aperture of the iris diaphragm okay one more circular frame is there here it is circular frame is there which is uh, used to control the wavelength of if if we need a particular wavelength of light we can plate a sheet here you know sheet of any particular color to control the wavelength of the light which we want but here i haven't played any i haven't placed any of the uh, colored sheet because i i want the white light for my Uh, experiments so this was all about uh, the different parts of the microscopes now we would see the physical basis of microscopy so what are the physical basis first of all the examiner may ask you image formation the examiner may ask you how the final image of the microscope is formed so in the compound microscope see this is the image for forming mechanism this is objective lens and this is eye lens this is objective a b is objective okay so rays are coming uh, through the center of the lens and one is coming parallel and making a image which is inverted a uh, little larger than this one and which is real okay so now the rays from this image are going through the eye lens which are the diverging lens uh, diverging rays but if we trace the back of these rays the image will be formed which is large inverted and virtual so examiner may ask you how is the final image so the final image is large virtual and inverted okay so this is image formation now the examiner may ask you magnification of the lens so how much is the total magnification when you are using different type of objective lenses so if we are using the low power objective so the power of the uh, eye lens is 10 and power of the objective is 10 so 10 is to 10 100x is the total magnification if we, we are using low power objective suppose we are using high power objective then this is 10 is the power of uh i uh, i lens and 40x is the power of objective lens so the total magnification here will be 10 into 40 400x in case of oil immersion the same will be 10 into 100 100 is the power of objective lens here and 10 is the power of i lens so the total magnification will be 1000x now uh examiner may ask you one more question what is visual acuity so visual acuity term is used for uh, used to know the power of i so this term is always used for i so visual acuity is the ability of the eye to differentiate two points 
separate from each other. Uh, what is that? What does that mean? If suppose two points are present which are very near to each other, and I is able to differentiate these points, so this is known as visual acuity. So a smaller will be the distance between two points, better will be the visual acuity. Okay. So the same thing is resolution or resolving power. So this is used for any of the any of the system. It may be eye, it may be simple lens, or it may be compound microscope. So this can be used for anything. So what is resolving power? Resolving power is the ability of any system to differentiate two points which are very near to each other. So again, the smaller will be the distance between two points which that system can differentiate as separate points. So, uh, uh, so better will be the resolution. Okay. So, uh, resolution or resolving power is always expressed in term of limit of resolution. Means the smallest length which that system can differentiate is limit of resolution. So, in case of unaided human eye, it is 0.15 to 0.25 millimeters means whenever the visual acuity is normal in that case limit of resolution is this much means the eye is able to differentiate the points when they are separate from each other by this distance as a separate points. If the distance between the two points is less than this then the eye will perceive as single point. Okay? So, the same thing for the compound microscope is 0 0.25 micrometer and the, for the electron microscope it is 0 0.5 nanometers. So, this was about the resolution or resolving power of any system. Now, what is working distance? The next, next question your examiner may ask what is working distance? So, what is that? Working distance is the distance between objective lenses and the specimen which may be different for, for different uh, type of objective lenses. If we are using suppose 10 x, so this distance may be about 1 centimeter. If we are using 40 x, then it is about 1 millimeter more or it may be little less or more than 1 millimeter. And in case of uh, oil immersion lens, it is even less than 1 millimeter. Okay? So, you must know the uh, working distance so that it will be easy for you to focus any object. Otherwise, you will try to search anywhere. Okay? So, in case of 10x objective lens, it is 1 centimeter, about 1 centimeter, and in case of 40x, it is about 1 millimeter, and for 100x or oil immersion, it may be less than or equal to the 1 millimeter. Now, the numerical aperture. So, what is numerical aperture? We must know this is very common question which your examiner is going to ask. So, this is your objective lens and this is a specimen. So, from here the rays are coming from the specimen, the rays are coming and through to the objective lens are and are making image. Suppose this alpha is the angle which is subtended, which is half of the angle made by these rays. So, you can see this is the total angle made by these rays and alpha is the half of that angle. Okay? So, this is alpha angle and n. What is n? So, so the formula for the numerical aperture is n sin alpha. Okay? So, n sin alpha, alpha, now n is the refractive index of the media which is there between the specimen and objective lens. Now, which, what is the refractive media? In case of 10x and in case of 40x, the, uh, this media is air. So, the refractive index of the air is about 1, equal to 1. And in, in case of oil immersion in which we are using uh, cedar wood oil or liquid paraffin. So, the uh, refractive index is about 1.55 which is equal to the glass. Okay? So, here very less deviation of the rays is there. So, the refractive index of the media is refractive index of the media is 1.55. So, 
here you can see the numerical aperture of the uh, 10x is minimal because this alpha value will be minimal okay in case of uh, you know 40x lens we uh, this angle will increase okay the distance will decrease and this angle will uh, increase so the value of the n sin alpha will increase in case of oil immersion lens this distance will decrease little more uh, but the value of n will increase so the numerical aperture for the oil immersion lens will be highest okay so this was all about uh, the compound structure of the compound microscope and mechanism of image formation.